welcome. We will be discussing in session 15 on foreign exchange exposure. So, in foreign exchange exposure, exposure before starting the foreign exchange exposure, we should understand the difference between exposure and risk. Exposure when there is, there is a volatility in foreign currency market, it creates exposure and volatility when crystallized, it creates some kind of loss, it is a risk. When exposure are crystallized, it is a risk and before risk, all ex, whatever the volatility we, we witness, these are the exposure. Exposure and risk two different concepts and on that basis, three three different kind of exposures are the exposures are being identified for foreign currency market. We will be discussing what is called a transaction exposure, what is then second we will be discussing about what is called a translation exposure and also we will be discussing about operational exposure. So, we will discuss about foreign exchange exposure, foreign exchange exposure I mentioned here in a market determined exchange rate regime, exchange rate fluctuate on the basis of demand and supply and this fluctuation of exchange rate create risks in the foreign exchange market. And when, when foreign exchange exposure is a measure of potential firms profitability, that is when exposures are foreign exchange exposure or the cor corporate are having assets and liability in, in denominated in foreign currency, it affects their profitability, it affects their net cash inflow and also because it affects that the profit and also operational expenses. So, when foreign exchange in a corporate and foreign exchange assets and liabilities are there, when exchange rate fluctuates the value of the assets and liability also fluctuate. The assets and liability provide what is called a profit and the when assets liability themselves fluctuate, profit and profitability also fluctuate. The net cash position, any open cash in foreign currencies are there that also fluctuate because exchange rate itself fluctuate. With the liberalization of foreign exchange market, the corporate now having exposure in different foreign currency. They are the corporate particular big MNC have their own subsidiary, have their own company, have their assets and liability segregated to different currency and all the subsidiary, all the assets liability which are denominated in different currency are, are exposed to foreign exchange fluctuation. And this foreign exchange fluctuation create some kind of risk for the corporate, the risks are being dis, are being segregated into two part, what is called one part is transaction risk, another part is what is called what is called economic exposure or transaction exposure, economic exposure and translation exposure. When asset liability which are daily in nature particularly export, import, payments, payment, receivables, payments and receivables are there denominated different currency, everyday transaction take place the everyday fluctuation exchange rate create transaction exposure. When asset liability spread over over the year and the future cash flow also affected because of the uh, foreign exchange fluctuation, this create what is called economic exposure. And when, when the company having number of subsidiary in abroad, they converted the subsidiary are trading in different foreign currency and when convert the foreign currency into a domestic domestic money, there will be foreign currency exposures are there. These are called translation exposure or accounting exposure and translation exposure accounting exposure only for a time frame because we generally prepare the balances once in a quarter or once in a year and as, as asset and liability converted into convert into but home currency at a particular rate and since rates are fluctuate 
which rate they have to convert the foreign currency that create translation exposure. So, we will be discussing about all this exposure in different sessions. Today, we will be discussing about transaction exposure and try to address the issue of transaction exposure in some as kind of assessment of transaction exposure. So, as I mentioned, the sensitivity of home currency value, sensitivity of home currency value of assets and liability which are denominated in foreign current currency to unanticipated changes in exchange rate is known as transaction exposure. Because home currency value changes, because why it is changes? The exposure or the assets liabilities are in other currency, in foreign currency. When they convert into domestic currency, the domestic currency fluctu the fluctuation of domestic currency creates some kind of transaction exposure or transaction risk. So, unanticipated changes in exchange rate also have effect in future sales, future prices and cost because when exchange rate changes the future sales also affected because of because of fluctuation of foreign currency. The operating cost of the company also changes because of fluctuation of foreign currency. This type of exposure which affect affect the future position of the foreign corporate it, it is known as operating exposure or economic exposure or strategic exposure. And other kind of short term exposure is also known as trans translation exposure or accounting exposure. As I mentioned different MNC have different subsidiary in different countries. And when the MNC or the home company or the home the parent company wanted to have this balance sheet, they want to merge the subsidiary balance sheet into its own parent balance sheet and give what is called a what is called the balance sheet of the entire company. Since subsidiary balance sheets are, uh, 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 are merged with the parent company balance sheet to provide the entire company balance sheet, the subsidiaries are being traded or assets or liability are in different currency, the conversion of foreign currency subsidiary assets and liability creates some kind of exposure. This exposures are accounting exposure, because on accounting sense the exposures are there, in the real sense there is no exposure. Since we prepared the foreign currency, uh, we prepared the account uh, your balance sheet at a particular time point of time on that particular point of time there is translation exposure and the other than there is no exposure at all. Since for that reason translation exposures are not a exposure it is only for the conversion of, a, of subsidiary balance sheet into parent company balance sheet some exposures are there in real sense there is no exposure. However, in real sense we have transaction exposure because day to day transaction are being affected because of fluctuation of foreign currency. We have economic or operating exposure or strategic exposure because our future plan, future sale, future prices, future operating cost are being affected because of fluctuation of foreign currency. We have a strategic exposure because of that region and we are going to discuss about the transaction exposure and also operating exposure in in different session. To this session we will be discussing about transaction exposure. Let us discuss about transaction exposure. Transaction exposure I as I mentioned it, it, is, it measures the gain, gains or losses that arise from the settlement of exchange rate, the settlement of, ex, uh, of existing financial obligation. Because the financial obligation may be existing financial obligation, may be a export, may be import and whenever there is a fluctuation of, ex of exchange rate, the value of the export is uh, go on changing, value of the import also go on changing. 
and because of this reason the corporate or the exporter may have may face what is called a transaction exposure. The transaction exposure arises from purchasing or selling on goods and services on credit basis when prices are stated in foreign currency. We are purchasing some goods or we are selling some goods then the goods prices are in foreign currency. Whenever there is a foreign currency fluctuation the price the value of the value of the goods and services changes we have foreign transaction exposure. When borrowing or lending funds when payment is, is to be made in a foreign currency when a borrowing foreign currency from abroad and we have to pay principal we have to pay regular interest since the fluctuation of foreign currencies are there the principal value changes the interest payment also changes so we have transaction exposure. We are lending foreign currency we are giving foreign currency to some other person the person is repaying us in the form of uh, principal in the form of what is called interest payment since the principal interest payment future payments are there future receivables are there since the exchange rate fluctuates fluctuate future receivables also fluctuate it is a transaction exposure. Foreign currency denominated receivables all kind of receivables it is a export receivable, it is a interest payment receivable, it is a uh, principal payment receivables, all receivables. If the receivables denominated in foreign currency, the, the currency fluctuation change the value of the receivable and it is a transaction exposure. A transaction exposure is actually created at the first moment the seller quote a price in foreign currency term to a potential buyer. When a transaction is created, when it will be created, when a seller quote a foreign currency to a foreign buyer, the foreign buyer which pay will pay not instantly after some time will pay. Whenever there is a time difference in payment, they create a transaction exposure. So, transaction exposure is because of export side, because of import side, because of foreign currency payment, foreign currency receivable, foreign currency lending, foreign currency borrowing. All all are transaction and all this transaction create transaction exposure because the underlying asset is a exchange rate which value fluctuate and there will be exposure or there will be risks in foreign currency transaction. So, all transaction which are denoted in foreign currency are foreign currency exposure and how to assess the exposure we will discover through different process are there for assessing the exposure. To understand the assessment of transaction exposure let us do a problem. You can see the problem the, an Indian firm sell merchandise and on open account to a US buyer for US dollar to 85,000 payment to be made in 30 days. The current exchange rate is 525050 per dollar and the Indian seller expect to exchange US dollar received from for 149,063,925. When payment is received the transaction exposure arise because the dollar may not remain as 52. 525050. 50, 50. What does it mean here? This example which I mentioned here Indian firm sell merchandise export to a US buyer, and US buyer supposed to pay 2,85,000 in 30 days. So, there is a 30 days time period, the US buyers will apply for an exchange, but to a amount 285000 dollar. So, when the merchandise the Indian firm export US dollar Indian firm export US dollar amount export amounting to 285000 and this export receive export payment 
come to the Indian 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 form, Indian form after 30 days. Repayment repayment would be after 30 days. When actually export, when they actually export, that time Indian currency was currency market current currency market US dollar was quoted 1 dollar 525050 and after 30 days the exporter will get 285000 and the 285000 suppose today they get today the person the exporter get he will convert at 525050 and get the rupee amount but after 30 days we do not know what will be the rate of wage dollar and this create a transaction exposure because dollar and rupee conversion rate after 30 days may not continue at 525050 and it will it create a, a what is called a transaction exposure. A transaction exposure how it create a transaction happened the transaction is export amounted to US dollar to like 85,000 and this at the current rate of 525050. But this dollar may not remain as 525050, it creates. So, whenever the person get 285000 dollar at this rate may not continue, it creates transaction exposure. Suppose, suppose the US dollar after 30 days. After 30 days, US dollar quote as suppose quote 1 dollar is equal to 1 dollar quote at 525005. So, when 5005 quote, when the exporter got after 30 days this amount of dollar to like 85,000, he will convert at current rate, the current rate is 52500, which is less than 525050 which was prevailing before one month when actually exported. So, it create a transaction loss, it create a transaction loss. Suppose scenario 2 is there, suppose US dollar code 526050. So, this is more than 5050, it will create a transaction profit for the exporter. But exporter cannot know whether he is a, he will be in loss or he will be in profit. So, anything which a create a risk for him, the risk is a, the risk or exposure is a transaction exposure. So, so, chances of loss or gain depends upon the future market and future market is uncertain and this transaction leads to a uncertainty and it is a transaction exposure. Okay. Now, this is called open account purchaser selling is open account because this account what you discuss why it is called open account this it is open account because this this dollar 2,85,000 is open, open in the sense that we have not the exporter had not purchased any kind of risk management product for converting the for converting the future cash flow at a particular constant amount. The because if the exporter purchases a risk management product in the form of forward contract in the form of few foreign currency futures or options, its value of future value remain constant. So, there may not be any transaction exposure. Here, it is an open account, there is no purchase of foreign currency hedging product. So, the open account, its value is open, value is may come down, 
may increase depends upon the future ca future US dollar and Indian rupee exchange rate. They open because it may go up, it may come down, it depends upon the market exchange rate. So, there is you see open account because there is no ex, there is for, there is no foreign exchange forward or foreign exchange future per uh, hedging product purchased by the exporter. Now, come to another problem what is called a, a borrowing and lending problems. Here also you have to understand that I mentioned earlier that any kind of borrowing or any kind of lending where foreign exchange is involved it create a transaction exposure. The corporate is borrowing foreign currency. So, corporate has to Indian corporate is borrowing foreign currency from abroad corporate has to pay the principal after maturity and till the maturity the corporate has to repay what is called interest amount in foreign exchange. So, there will be a risk and the risk is since the payment and future future oriented any fluctuation of exchange rate it is exposure. So, it is create a foreign exchange transaction exposure. Similarly, a Indian corporate lends a foreign currency to some abroad partner abroad person to abroad person it also create what is called foreign currency transaction exposure because the lender received the lender received interest payment from the borrower in foreign currency the lender received the principal payment from the borrower in foreign currency which are future oriented so, all these transaction which are future oriented which are which repayments are future oriented create transaction exposure. So, let us discuss a borrowing and lending side. If you see the problems here an Indian company has long term exposure in the form of commercial borrowing in US dollar. It has taken a 10 years commercial loan of 200 million US dollar in 2003 the interest rate for the same loan is linked to 6 month LIBOR and payment will be made in US dollar. In 2003 the US, the US dollar and Indian rupee spot rate was 525050. So, here a two kind of exposures are there first kind is you have to understand here that is a long term exposure because a Indian company has a com got a commercial borrowing from in the in US dollar for 10 years he borrowed in 2003 he is supposed to repay the principal in 2013 10 years will be over. So, that time the principal payment will, will be made, but in the meantime the Indian company has to pay interest payment the interest payment generally is 6 months every 6 month interest payment will be there the interest payment linked to LIBOR 6 month LIBOR every 6 month what is the LIBOR rate that rate interest payment will be there. Since LIBOR is itself fluctuate it will create another kind of risk the foreign currency is fluctuate it create risk LIBOR fluctuate it also create risk. So, here the Indian Indian company face Indian company faces the commercial bo two kind of risks one is foreign currency exchange rate fluctuation risk and LIBOR exchange LIBOR rate fluctuation risk two different risks are, flu are there. So, so, here long term exposures are there the so long term exposure 10 years 10 year debt borrowing or commercial borrowing involving US dollar 200 million. that in 2003 when the actual borrowing took place borrowing took place at that time the spot rate was US dollar 52 52 5050 at the spot rate at this rate the Indian commerce Indian commerce uh, Indian uh, company got the 200 million dollar 
and he is supposed to pay return the return the 200 million dollar after 10 years that is 2013. In between the company has to pay interest rate which is linked to interest payment interest payment is 6 month every 6 month has to pay and this link to LIBOR London interbank offer rate. London interbank offer rate is a fluctuating every moment and 6 month LIBOR linked to 6 month LIBOR. So, every moment the interest rate fluctuates, every moment there is a risk. Every 6 month the company has, Indian company has to pay interest rate. So, every in the in foreign currency. So, for Indian company does not know what will be the foreign currency after 6 months. So, there is a transaction exposure risk. So, now the payment half year leave to pay payment. So, so the payment will be made half yearly. So, there will be risk. The payment linked to your LIBOR, LIBOR will fluctuate, there is a risk. Suppose we understand the suppose that here if you see that suppose in 2003 when actually payment took place that time the dollar was rate was 525050. The principal he got, how much principal he got? The 2003, 2003 suppose the spot rate, spot rate was 525050 into 200 million he got, 200 million US dollar he got how much? 10501, 501 millions of rupees. So, he got million rupee, 10501 million rupee he got. Now, in 2004, 2004, suppose he wanted to repay, 2004 if he wanted to repay suppose, that time dollar why dollar is failing at 53.5050. It is not 52.5050. Now increase to 53.5050. There is a transaction risk. Similarly, suppose 2005 you want to repay the loan, so it will be 54.6060. The repayment will be 10920. So dollar is changing. The amount of principal payment also fluctuates. In 2012, actually repayment track took place that time dollar is 62000. So, in he has to pay the Indian company has to repay 12040 amount of 40 amount of what is called principal amount. So, but he got how much? He got 10501 principal, but because dollar is fluctuating and 2012 actual repayment took place that time he will pay 12040. So, he received in 2003, the Indian company received 10501, e rupee remain constant and at 52.50, there will be no transaction exposure. When the rupee increases, suppose 53.50560, the amount will be 10701, so transaction exposure is 200 million. Similarly, rupee, similarly 2005, suppose you want to repay, that time rupee is 5460, the actual repayment will 10920 rupee millions of rupee transaction exposure is 419 millions of rupees. But how we calculate this? I have calculated the 52 is, is a spot rate. Now suppose in 2000, 2004 you wanted to repay. Repayment suppose take, uh, repayment of principal took place at 2004. In 2004 US dollar is US dollar 53. 605060. Suppose it may be different. Suppose 5060. How much would repay? 200 million dollar. So rupee rupee will 5350. So how much would repay? 5356560 into 200. So this amount to 10701. But actually, how much he got? 10501. So, but he repaying same principal interest. I am not calculating here. So, interest will be separate tricks. 
So, only principal payment repayment supposed to return principal 200 dollar or equivalent of rupee of 10501 million, but actually repaying with 10701 million of rupees. Why this arises? Because exchange rate when we borrowed that time exchange rate of 525050, now it is 535060. Because of this, this is extra amount he is paying, extra amount is how much? 10701 minus 10501, this is 200 million of rupees extra he is repaying, only principal amount, that is transaction exposure. And this same thing I have calculated here for 2005-2012 and the principal itself creating a uh, different amount is paying because of change in exchange rate or fluctuation in exchange rate, it is a transaction exposure, it is a principal payment only. Let us come to the interest payment side. Interest payment side heavy every 6 months you have to repay the interest, every 6 months you supposed to repay the interest. Here suppose in September he is borrowed in March, now every 6 months 6 months has come September 2003, 6 month LIBOR as Indian rupee at that time 525050 and LIBOR, LIBOR is 6.25 percentage, the interest amount will be 6.25 percentage. So, in say 6.25 million of US dollar an interest payment in millions of rupee rate is 525050 into 6.25 millions of rupee it will be 6328.16 millions of rupee. So, there will be no transaction exposure why because the current rate is 5250 the spot rate remain constant. Suppose spot rate change what trade is a March 2004 again after 6 months again interest payment will be there. So, at that time rupee at that time rupee become 535060 dollar also uh, uh, LIBOR also change to 6.85. So, 6.85 has to pay. So, now 366 if you multiply you multiply the into 6.85, 6.85 into 200 dollar, 6 yearly, 6 month interest rate. So, it become 366.52, but since dollar has changed to from 52 to 5050 to 535060, the difference has come around 38.36, extra payments are there. So, here the calculation is like that, suppose at the September dollar rate remain constant as 1 dollar is 52, 52 5050, LIBOR interest rate is 6.25 percentage and 6 month interest payment, interest payment will be 6 month basis, 6 month basis so 6.25, 6.25 millions of US dollar in million, because the amount principal borrowed is 200 million, every 6 interested annualized is 6.25, 6.25 into 200 dollar into 1 by 2, because yearly interested 6 month interested amount will be 6.25. The calculation is 6 month interested interest payment interest rate is 6.25 percentage into 200 million US dollar into half 6 half yearly. So, it is come 6.25 millions of US dollar, but if interest rate remain constant at 525050 then rupee equivalent will be rupee rupee equivalent of interest payment will be 6.25 into 52.5050, it is coming around 328.16. If interest rate, if dollar rate remain constant, then it will come in 620. This is September 2004. 
zero three. Now next six month is March zero four. Suppose March zero four has arrived. So, but here dollar may not remain constant. One dollar suppose increase to fifty two fifty three. 535060. Now, dollar may not remain constant after 6 months. Now, it is depreciated, to be depreciated to 535060. Now, what will be the interest payment? LIBOR, at the same time, LIBOR may not remain constant as 6.25. LIBOR itself is fluctuating. So, LIBOR become 6.85 percentage. Then, interest payment? Interest payment will be? In interest payment will be in US dollar, it will be 6.85 US dollar in million, US dollar in million, but this rupee equivalent how much? Rupee equivalent will be rupee equivalent will be 6.85 into now dollar has changed to 53. So, 535060. This is coming how much? This is will be 366.52. This is now you see 6 months before it was 328.16 millions of rupee. Now 6 months after it becomes 366.52 the transaction risk. So, the Indian co company need to pay more why it is paying more? The principal amount remain constant 200 million. Here he is paying more because rupee has depreciated from 525050 to 535060. One reason. Second reason is the LIBOR is fluctuating from 6.825 to 6.85. This two region because of this two region that per the Indian company is paying more and this open position he has not purchased any kind of risk management product to make to con, to, con, to make the LIBOR constant or to make the rupee constant. And there is open position in two side, one side is dollar side conversion rate is open position, interest payment side LIBOR is open position, both open position created a transaction risk for the company and company is going on paying a different amount a particular a different phases of payment and this is called a transaction exposure and in lending and borrowing side. And same thing I mentioned here rupees go rupee go rupee or dollar conversion goes on appreciating or rupee go depreciating further and at the same time LIBOR also appreciating. So, there will be more transaction exposure in this process and this process the transaction exposure is two way, one way is LIBOR fluctuation, another way is rupee, rupee dollar fluctuation, both side the transaction exposures are there. So, then question is how to, how to treat this transaction exposure or how to manage this transaction exposure. That should be the treatment for transaction exposures are there, because transaction exposure create uncertainty in the payment and receivable side. It create uncertainty in international trade, it create uncertainty borrowing lending side, it create uncertainty in any kind of fund exchange transaction side. So, it need to be prevented or need to be observed in a different management practices. The practices available to us through the what is called transaction exposure management system. The transaction exposure management systems are there. The four key steps involved in treatment of transaction exposure. The first is you have to record the transaction exposure. Initial recording of transaction exposure is very important. Then second is recording of outstanding foreign currency balances because we have to identify transaction exposure first time and what is the open position of transaction exposure or in foreign currency that has to need to be identified. And then you have to understand whether I am gaining because of transaction exposure, I am losing because of transaction exposure. So, that no, some kind of forecasting you have to make for gain and loss of transaction exposure. 
and final finally it settlement of foreign currency receivables and payment here here to settle the foreign currency or transaction exposure lost or gain by going for it what is called risk management product and risk management products are available to us in the form of forward contract huge foreign currency futures foreign currency options and also some extent we have the negotiating skill suppose negotiating skill in the form of operational risk assessment approach and this process also some extent help in minimizing the transaction exposure if you negotiate with your party that i am going to pay constant amount then transaction exposure automatically removed but the negotiation skill depends upon the bargaining power of two parties if the party one party is very high bargaining power he can negotiate but two parties are both are same bargaining power they have to come to a negotiation side and they negotiate that that should be a transaction exposure let us take the transaction as for 50 50 side in this process we can minimize the transaction exposure so transaction exposure how to treat it the different way to treatment and the treatments are available to us in the form of forward currency management system the forward currency management system in the form of future currency foreign currency options and foreign currency forward right and we will be discussing about forward foreign currency forward side how you can use the transaction exposure management system let us discuss a problems first problem an indian exporter export on 28th of december 2011 us dollar 165000 worth of garment to a equivalent to a us to to us on 3 month credit basis when the us dollar was equivalent to 515500 an indian exporter he exported garment worth of 165000 us dollar on 20th december 2011 and that particular day that particular day the exchange rate market quoted rupee as 515050 per dollar the payment would be made it is a few after 3 month payment will start on credit basis he exported here the indian exporter export on credit basis means the us person got the export on credit side he has to repay within 3 month in different installment amount and payment would be made in 3 installment due on 20th march 2012 25% of the amount that is 165000 will be paid on 20th march 15th april 2012 65% of the 165000 will be paid in on 15th april and rest amount on 20th may three installment 165000 us dollar will be repaid by the us importer to the indian exporter however three installment would be paid in three different time period and in three different time period rupee dollar fluctuating in the market and we have a transaction exposure here the indian merchant is a transaction exposure in the meantime rupee dollar fluctuation at there and it was expected that the exchange rate will be 5085 on 20th may 20th march 5325 on 15th april and and 5325 on 20th march 20th may of per us dollar so in this process exchange is fluctuating and the rupee dollar will be 5085 on on 20th march 5165 on on 15th april and 5325 on 20th may so the different exchange rate all this different all this exchange rate rupee dollar exchange rate different from the current spot 5155 so that is transaction exposure the question is here you have to identify transaction exposure and estimate the amount of exposure now let us do the problem what is the problem on 20th april 2012 
on 20th, 20th, 20th December, 20th December 2011, Indian exporter exported US dollar some exported what garment equivalent of one US dollar one lakh sixty five thousand and on this rate spot market exchange rate was one dollar is equivalent to fifty one five zero zero and this this was exported on this time 515050 was Indian rupee. Now, this repayment of US dollar 165,000 spread over 3 installment. The installment due, installment due, first due as on March 20th 2000 trial, how much? 25 percentage. Second due is April 15th, 2012, 65 percentage, and last May 20th, 2012, that is 10 percentage. This percentage of 1,65,000 US dollars. So, this is a due date and this due date the percent recorded that on March, on March the spot rate would be on March the spot rate would be 50, 5, 0, 50, 85 and on April it will be 50, 51. 65 and on May it will be 53.25. Though this is a spot rate, spot rate prevailing this. Now, this all these spot rate are different from the spot rate of export date, exported date. The, the date of 20th December, the Indian exporter exported one goods of worth 165000 US dollar that date the exchange rate was 51550 but he is getting the installment payment in three different time period and three different rate and all these rates are different from this rate so there is a transaction exposure so this transaction exposure need to be addressed and need to be assessed whether there is a gain or loss so, now let us do this problem. Now, if you see, if you see the payment will be made on different time period. Now, on 20th April, first payment installment payment will be that. So, first installment payment is on March. 20th 2012, the how much 25 percent of 1,65,000, this is equivalent of US dollar 1,65,000 and this this 1,65,000 will be converted into March date spot rate, so March date spot rate is 50, 85. So, 25 percentage into 165,000 into 50, 85 will be equivalent to how much rupee? How much rupee it will be? It will be gain. Suppose you do it in different way. So, and the receivable side, if you see that 51.55, so sales done 1,65,000. So, if you at 5185, the equivalent amount was 8505750. Multiplication of these two, and Indian exporter supposed to receive this much of dollar, this much of rupee. Now, on 20th March, first installment, he is receiving 
installment amount that is 165 25% of 165000 that is 412500 US dollar and this will be converted into what rate 5085 because on 20th March US dollar is 5085 is getting this much of amount so exchange loss will be there he is supposed to get at 5155 but he is getting at 5085 so the, that is a loss of 2 lakh 2 how is the loss calculated so here he is supposed to receive how much supposed to receive the rupee equivalent amount 2097562 but he is supposed this the this is equivalent at march but actually supposed to receive 5155 because at the current that spot rate of december so that is a loss of loss of what if you calculate this minus this this loss will be around loss will be negative side 2 la 28875 to march loss will be 282875 similarly on similarly on 20th april 15th april next installment date is 15th april 15th april if you see here the US dollar is 5165 but contracted 50, 50, 5155. Now US dollar is appre depreciated, rupee is appreciated, rupee is depreciated, rupee is appreciated. Rupee is appreciated. So installment is 70, 65 percent, 65 percent of 165 is 10725 US dollar. How much supposed to receive? This into this, this 10725 into 5165 rupee amount is this much of rupee amount, but rupee amount this much, receivable also this much, but actually there is a gain here. Why? Rupee depreciated from 51.55 to 51.65, 10 paisa gain, 10 paisa gain, 10 paisa rupee depreciated, for that reason he is getting 10725 extra amount. But in case of 20th March, there is a loss of this much in 20, 15th April, there is a gain of this much. But final payment 20th May, 20th May 10 percent supposed to get, 25 percent is already got in 20th April, 20th March, 65 percent is got in 15th April. So, another 10 percent supposed to get in 20th May, 10 percent of 165,000 is 16500 and rupee that time further depreciated 5325. So, he is getting a amount of 878625 and rupee depreciated he got the extra amount to the gain is in place of 5155 he is getting per dollar 5325 there is a gain here. So, total gain is he is getting a gain of total gain if you calculate total exchange gain is this plus this is equivalent to 38775 total loss because of rupee depreciation. 288875 that is loss here, net gain is 9900. So, net transaction gain is 9900 Indian rupee. However, there is a fluctuation rupee is against US dollar created transaction exposure and transaction exposure is spread over 3 different installment, 3 different installment, 3 different rates are available and this is created transaction exposure. There is also multiple currency exposures are there, multiple currency exposure because each currency have a own gain and loss will be there. So, there will be multiple currency exposures are there. If you see here the US dollar imported importable, US dollar euro, euro exportable and US dollar receivable, US dollar payment, euro payment all these are there, different maturity period, different receivables and payments are there. And this on this basis how to estimate the transaction exposure? We can, we can go for euro receivable 55 days, euro payable 55 days. So, net transaction exposure euro is 15,000. Similarly, US dollar receivable 45 days 98500, US dollar payable 45 days 99, net transaction exposure US dollar is 500. So, there is a different dollar, different net exposures are there, net transaction exposure gain is there in case of euro dollar, euro currency net 
transaction exposure US dollar loss is there 500. So, there is a much, uh, different maturity period, different currency type exposure in importer are uh, there. So, conclusion, conclusion a currency wise exposure, currency wise liability assets are there. This asset liability fluctuation create exchange rate risks, exchange rate risks create transaction exposure. How to transaction exposure you can have to do, you have to segregate the transaction exposure currency wise, maturity wise and surplus and payment side and on that basis you can identify transaction exposure on different amount wise and try to address the transaction exposure by and, and through identification through settlement process and, and, and further treatment of transaction exposure can be done through the forward currency exposure and forward currency payment side. Thank you for the, you can see the references here, references are same thing in you Resnick holiday, Resnick uh, urine 2004 and multinational financial exposure Alan C further. Thank you.